The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Small Yuzuri 3D inshore, first of the season, right after the blow. Bring them on! I know it's just a little guy, but after 10 days tied up to the dock, the bilge pump working overtime and the torrential rains, told my wife on Monday, the battery needs to get charged because the alternator's got to, yeah, 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 she said, see you in a few hours. So an hour or two late Monday, the afternoon search along the sod banks. Now that's the article I was talking about in last week's video fishing forecast. It's on page 20 and 21 of the October edition sod bank plug-in for those back bay outback striped bass. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's October 5th and this cat's away for a few hours longer here in Miramar Beach in Florida. Beautiful, beautiful place to be, uh, although I feel like I'm missing something special. FOMO, right? Uh, it's the I'm here in the Gulf of Mexico, down in Florida, of course, it's the American Sport Fishing Association's annual summit. We're talking taxes, fisheries policy and conservation, angler management, and since I'm here we're talking anger, anger management. Uh, all fishing industry from all over the country trying to find out what's on everybody's minds and how to protect our entire assets, all of us in the recreational uh, fishing community. But what I really wanted to know while I was here, while I'm here in Miramar Beach, just as those wheels went up on the jet airplane leaving Newark on Tuesday morning, I wanted to know what was going on on those New Jersey beaches. Um, the answer I got was no, you didn't really miss anything, and that means my glass half full product, uh, pr prediction last Thursday, I guess it was wrong. Uh, talking about the offshore winds blowing and thinking about where we were this time uh, last year. However, I would tell you that, that, that we are approaching now the actual one year anniversary on October 8th. Bunker into the wind, the offshore breezes, the buffalo on the beach, the light easterlies turn around hard from the west. Well, that happened last year on October 8th, so perhaps again this Sunday, October 8th, with westerlies in the forecast, perhaps a little bit of a cooling of the surface waters, a little push on the tails of those baits in the back bay, sending them out, bunker nosing up against the wind, who knows? Action has got to get started soon. Our breaking news from home this week, not necessarily on the striped bass that I may have missed that I don't know if I did, although we are getting some reports of guys plugging some stripers along the central beaches. That has come through, me, through to me, so the bass are there. It's just not bonkers. But the big news, of course, is what was posted on social media by the New Jersey State Police this past Saturday. A new mandatory PFD rule is in effect starting November 1st for all boats under 26 feet. Specifically, the State Police said, quote, no owner or operator of a recreational fishing, fishing vessel, a recreational vessel, I should say, less than 26 feet, including rowboats, canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddle boards, shall permit its operation between November 1st and May 1st unless each person on board such vessel is wearing a securely fastened United States Coast Guard approved wearable personal flotation device of an appropriate size while such vessel is underway. Now, that word underway, that typically means when a boat is moving, under power or on the drift. No loopholes here, baby. Uh, you want to take off the PFD while you're at anchor? I guess you're fine to do that. But if you're in transit or the boat is under drift power and it's not anchored up or aground or in the slip, you have to wear that PFD. But any person inside the cabin of a cabin vessel shall be exempt from this requirement. But while the boat is under power or adrift, that should qualify as underway. In short, state police in New Jersey say U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket is required to be worn at all times outside of a cabin on a boat under 26 feet during the cold water months while in motion from November 1st through May 1st. And they say, quote, the goal of this legislative update is to prevent hypothermia deaths and to decrease the risks placed upon first responders during winter search and rescue operations on the waters on the New Jersey coast. 
Sorry, troopers, but this is not a legislative update. That would mean that Trenton senators and assemblymen, they passed a, a, a law that was signed by the governor. This wasn't legislative, it was regulatory, meaning it was enacted by the New Jersey Voting Regulation Commission that's mostly a volunteer board. They will meet again if you've never heard of them and you want to go see what a Voting Regulation Commission meeting is all about. You can go on October 25th at Liberty State Park in Jersey City. I believe that meeting starts at 5 p.m. if you're interested. Just go look up New Jersey Voting Regulation Commission. Now, this new mandate that comes into effect on November 1st, it does apply to for hire vessels too, I'm told. I spoke with some folks at the Marine Trades Association of New Jersey. They said they were surprised that this rule went into effect so quickly. They have been following it, and they did tell me that one of the original plans was to have this rule in place year-round. So yeah, it could have been worse. November 1st to May 1st. That begins on November 1st. Now there are options better than the bulky orange vests that you have stowed in your locker for emergency situations, right? Uh, typically I have an inflatable uh, a belt pack that I carry with me on the boat. Sometimes it's on me, but most times it's right near my console. Uh, you have those inflatable vests you can get at West Marine, their version, or the Mustang version. Uh, the kayak PFD I wear all the time when fishing on my kayak. Um, you know those vests, you can see it in that photo right there. You can wear that as well. That's a little bit bulkier. But again, to outfit your charters, if you're a for hire captain, or just yourself, making sure that you and five of your buddies are protected, are covered for the TOG, Striper, and sea bass trips next month, you're talking about at least another $500 minimum expense to bring yourself into compliance by November 1st. We should expect more word from this from the DEP and from the state police, the Marine Division, but that is the rule. We're only a month away from that. All right, TOG are in play from here on out. They're getting some, we're getting some solid reports from many of the bulkheads, jetties, and canals. It's the way a lot of folks the last 10, 15 days chomping at the bit to get out fishing. Open oceans are too rough, can't get out on the boat, so they're going to the canals, they're going to the jetties, they're going to the bulkheads. Greenies, sand crabs, fiddler crabs working as well. And of course, this past Sunday, October 1st, Black Sea Bass opened here here. I wish I was I wish I was there. I know Florida's great. But there in New Jersey, back at home, Black Sea Bass opened on Sunday, October 1st. Uh, I know a lot of the charter boats are heading out for sea bass at this point. The head boats, like the big Jamaica, they're sailing east to get to those reefs, wrecks, and snags looking for some of those jumbo sea bite uh, sea bass biting. So that action is going on too. Of course, it's prime time. Run and gun for the Speedsters too, the false albacore, Spanish mackerel, and the bonita. Uh, I actually had an invite from a friend of mine this week who is going to the offshore grounds today looking for tuna. Uh, I can't complain, I'm sitting at a beachside bar. Uh, couldn't make it, but hopefully uh, some folks are finding some of those fish, those tuna, on the offshore grounds. Um, but I would tell you that there are some folks that are catching them. Uh, this week's cover boy, for example, Jack Glassberg, he and Dad David were just out a couple of weeks ago, had a nice yellowfin tuna that's on the video here. Look at that. That's a beautiful fish. Uh, they kept only enough what they wanted to bring home, but they deployed some of those gray fish tag streamer tags into those yellowfin tuna. So with that said, as we look ahead towards the weekend and the offshore grounds from the Hudson to Baltimore, it does look dicey again. Sometime Friday night into Saturday into Sunday uh, with some heavy seas. Uh, it's that time of year again, of course, where the windows, the weather windows get just a little bit tighter uh, every time you think about going out. But those tuna are still there. Uh, last we heard from some of the areas like the triple wrecks, there were, were some yellowfin there before the blow. Let's hope you can get out there this week before it turns ugly again this weekend, so says NOAA Marine Weather. Now, for many of us, that weather, of course, puts us back on the beach. Uh, that's where Courtney Goss was last Wednesday for the fluke finale. Uh, I, I think this is probably the, the last reported fluke catch I got of the 2023 season. Courtney caught this flatty at the jetty at Island Beach. She did not get a measurement on this fish because she released it. And I would think that it's getting ready to move east, heading towards the canyons for their wintering grounds there. Now, the little video clip I glommed from my buddy Nick's cell phone 
here in Florida this week, uh, apparently on the beach in Belmar. That there is a sand eel. I mean, can you imagine, could you imagine what will happen as all these peanut bunker flow out of the inlets down the beach and we also get a mix of sand eel in the midst as well? Uh, could really be that perfect storm of a fall run. Think about all the possibilities. Now last week, the Fisherman Magazine's Jenny Ackerman, she talked sand eel imitations, taking a look in her plug bag, making some recommendations. The week prior, she was talking peanut bunker, some of the plugs and plastics you need to throw. Now as we prepare for the striped bass onset, uh, onslaught at the Jersey Shore, uh, one good thing that I think folks need to remember, that 28 to 31 inch size limit and all those numbers of striped bass being released is how to properly manage, handle, catch and release those fish. Jenny invited my good friend John Tiedemann from Monmouth University to be her guest on Open Boat this week. Uh, take a listen, uh, some really good recommendations from John on how we can help, well, ensure that the released stripers that we're setting free have a better chance of survival. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. Today we're at my alma mater of Monmouth University here with Professor John Tiedemann. Professor Tiedemann is the Assistant Dean, the School of Science Director, and the Marine and Environmental Biology and Policy Program. And what he does is he specializes in marine ecology, coastal zone management, environmental science, marine recreational fisheries, and marine environmental education. His current applied research applies studies of striped bass and other recreationally valued species with an emphasis on best practices for the catch and release of angled striped bass. So we're gonna talk about today with the fall run upon us, catch and relief efforts for striped bass for new surf casters and returning ones and what you should do to keep the striped bass population alive and thriving. What are some common practices that surf casters can do that actually harm the striped bass? Maybe they're not aware that it harms them, but what are some of the things that they can change for the future? The surf caster, there's things that you shouldn't do in terms of handling the fish because it can harm the fish. And actually, even though the fish swims rapidly uh, away has stressed the fish, and perhaps re results in mortality sometime after the release. And then there's things that you can do to counter those bad practices. For example, you never wanna pick the fish up by the gill perculum. You never want your hands to go uh, into the gills. Along those same lines, you really don't wanna hold the fish uh, vertically. You wanna keep the fish horizontally and support its body. I, I like to tell people to support it kind of under the head and back by the tail. It's okay to lip the fish if you're rapidly gonna release it. And that's, that's the other thing. You definitely don't want this fish to hit dry surfaces. If you're on uh, the jetties, you don't wanna drag it up on the rocks. You need to find a spot that you can get down to the fish on the jetties and A, be safe for yourself, but B, safely release the fish. More importantly for us surf casters along the beach, we don't wanna drag that fish up on the sand and, uh, and have it covered with sand. That protective slime will come off the fish and that slime really protects the fish from parasites and disease and things like that. So what, we, what do we wanna do? We wanna keep that fish in the water as much as possible. You need to have your waders on. You can be knee deep in the water, unhook the fish in the water and let the fish swim away rapidly. If the fish seems stressed or lethargic, then you wanna revive the fish. You want to, always want to keep that fish moving forward. Remember, fish respire by water in the mouth and out the gills. So either moving it forward into the surf or in a figure eight where the water is always going in mouth uh, and out the gills. Uh, another simple thing is, especially if you're fishing uh, metal lures, uh, just get rid of those treble hooks and put a single hook on the metal lure. On your, on your plugs and other lures, crush the barb. It really will not affect your catching the fish, but it'll allow you for, for a quicker release. It'll allow you to unhook the fish in, in a quicker manner. So really what we, what we really say is handle with care. Air exposure, that's another one. You wanna get that fish back in the water if you do have to remove it from the water as fast as possible. Think of that in terms of if you fought the fish for a long period of time and it's exercised to exhaustion and then you remove it from the water, each one of these steps puts more stress on the fish. So don't go out there with your light trout rod when the fall run is on. Use a good surf rod, catch the fish, hook the fish, fight it quickly, 
land it quickly, keep it in the water, and release it as fast as you can. Quite a few beach options for you this weekend and a big boat show down on the Chesapeake for those that do a little bit of uh, traveling. And of course the Chesapeake, great place to be during the fall. First, let's check in with my friend George Shower, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, it's feeling a little bit like Groundhog Day here because this weekend looks like we'll be out fishing in the rain again. But I think there's still plenty of fish to be had. I don't think we need to call off any plans, but there is some great fishing going on. Again, like Groundhog's Day, the, the smallmouth fishing continues to outperform. Lots of guys out getting chunky smallmouths. Delaware River, Tim Keebler checked in. He's been out with a guest, uh, Lee Phillips, and he and his guests were both out getting some really beautiful smallmouth on the Delaware River. Now they're also catching some uh, some walleyes in between, so we're starting to get that mix over, guys. So lots of good fishing there. I might even talk about doing a little bit of musky fishing, as that water temperature is still in the low 60s, so that might be productive as well. Now out in the Susquehanna, still lots of smallmouth fishing as well. Brian Swingle out hitting his kayak, getting a few of them. Uh, also, we have Shane Fry out there on the Susquehanna getting into some more of those beautiful smallmouth. So I don't know if it's going to get any better than that if you want to get out for smallmouth. But there is some more fishing as far as the trout goes. Still in that extended season, uh, we had Steve Kolnick, a river guide out on the Lehigh River. He's out getting some beautiful brown trout on those streamers. Uh, you can also use the inline spinners and even some jerk baits to get into some of those beautiful fall brown trout. So guys, be sure you get out and get on this weekend and don't forget to drop us those photos. Uh, for Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. From the Pocono Mountains to the Pacific Coast of Costa Rica, let's check in with Captain Ben, Jackpot Sport Fishing, and Marina Pezvela in Capos. Hey there guys, how's it going? This is Ben Gilmore from down here in Costa Rica and the Marina Pezvela. We got this week's fishing report. Right now offshore, we got lots and lots of Dorado. There's been some great fishing down here kind of eight to 15 miles offshore. The main bite has been lots of Dorados in the 15 to 20 pound range, right in time for our Dorado Derby, one of the biggest Dorado tournaments in this part of the world. We got a big tournament happening on the weekend of the 12th of November and the weekend of the 19th of November. So can't wait for that one. Check out the details guys, marinapezvela.com uh, tournaments. So also out there right now, we got blue marlin, we got a few sailfish, and we got some good yellowfin tuna. Closer to shore, we had some good snapper going on along the beaches. We had some really nice snook pop up, which is kind of strange for this time of year. It's rainy season right now, but the snook have been biting good, as well as a few big rooster fish. Check us out, guys. This is Ben Gilmore, Jackpot Spore Fishing, and the Marina Pez Vela. A lot of events at the Jersey Shore this fall. Nick Honachewski's Barrier Island Beach Brawl, that gets underway on October 6th, runs through the 7th. That's from Point to Island Beach and all the stretches, all the sandy stretches in between. You can look for him out there at, I believe, believe Playa Bowls and the Crab's Claw Inn in Lavalette this Friday. The nine week LBI Surf Fishing Classic, that gets underway again on Saturday, October 7th. There's also a catch and release component, a Surf Masters Prize. If you want to check that out, you can go to LBI SFC. There's a big surf fishing seminar at the Ship Bottom Firehouse this Saturday. Again, that tournament goes on for nine weeks, over $20,000 being give, uh, given away this season. Go to Surf City Bait and Tackle, Fish Heads in Ship Bottom, or Jingles in Beach Haven. The United States Power Boat Show runs today through Sunday down in Annapolis. That started. Um, that starts tomorrow, uh, runs all the way through Sunday, a great event, some really big boats, and of course, as I mentioned before, uh, the Chesapeake is a great place to be during the Striper Run. Also, Saturday, you've got the 38th Annual Women's Surf Fishing Club of New Jersey Tournament, an association of Surf Angling Clubs Association, the ASAC Tournament. It's open to teams and individuals, surf casters, on the beach in Brigantine. I'm sure Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle has all the details. It'll help you, help you get geared up. But you can also contact Reggie Vasta at 215-901-2474 
or Kaz, M-O-F-A-E-R-I-E, at AOL.com. Now, our big tournament here at the Fisherman Magazine, the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, it's been going on all season long, and it will continue through November. This members-only event is exclusive to subscribers of the Fisherman Magazine. For a look at how you subscribers are doing in this year's tournament, let's check in with Tim Smith for a Dreamboat Leaderboard Update. No new entries this week in the Fisherman's Dream Boat Challenge. So the top three leaders remain unchanged. We have Kyle Krause in third place with 16 points. Eddie Terrabiel in second place with 18 points. And Bobby Cifarelli still stands on the top of the podium with 24 points. October's fish of the month is bluefish. Weigh in the heaviest bluefish in the month of October to win a tsunami rod and reel setup and a Dexter knife. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steiger Craft Center console powered by a Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Cod regulations at the Jersey Shore have changed to match what's going on at the federal level and also to match what's going on with the New England Fisheries Management Council. As of this very moment, the release came out last week. Minimum size limit for Atlantic cod in New Jersey is 23 inches. You have a five fish bag limit and an open season. It's open now through December, January 1st through May 31st, and then it's closed during those months in between. On the industrial offshore wind work and the cabling project from Island Beach State Park to Oyster Creek, from this letter received from a local property owner in Lacey Township, Orsted is indeed getting underway with their work on cabling on the mainland there across from where the cables are gonna be run ashore at Island Beach State Park, across the Barnegat Bay, and through to Lacey Township. Now, as you're moving out and about at Island Beach State Park this fall, just let me know if you have any access issues, if any access issues pop up. Apparently, there's gonna be a lot of construction equipment, a lot of construction workers out there. So if you have any situations that arise, please let me know. Email me at jhutchinson at thefisherman.com. Uh, I do believe the beach buggy passes, if I'm not mistaken, are being redesigned for 2024 to commemorate all this awesome work. It's a joke. It's absolutely a joke. That's not what the passes look like. I will let you know, of course, when those beach buggy passes are available, although some folks wish I wouldn't look for them to become available sometime in early December. It's, it's a joke, Wilmar. It's a joke. It's going back now, I guess, to sucking up to industry professionals, soaking in the rays, and uh, really just kind of enjoying my final day here in Miramar Beach, Florida for the American Sport Fishing Association Summit. But I can't wait to get back on my beloved sod banks. And yes, mark it down. I feel more confident now about this Sunday, October 8th, the anniversary, West Winds. I think it starts this weekend. Lock it in. Catch them up. I'll see you on the beach.